So one guy who kind of has been a diamond in the rough, so to speak, has been Benny Snell Jr., the rookie running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was drafted in the fourth round out of University of Kentucky, and he played well in University of Kentucky, but at the same time, it was, you know, who knew if it was really going to translate to the NFL. He did fall in the draft to the fourth overall pick. However, he is playing pretty well for the Pittsburgh Steelers, honestly, especially considering the fact that Teams really don't have to fear any semblance of a passing game whatsoever. He had his best game of the season against the Cincinnati Bengals. He ended up with 21 attempts for 98 yards, which, I mean, come on, you gotta give him just an extra one more carry, get him up to 100 somehow, right? But uh, he played pretty well, and so let's just jump into it. We'll start things off with this play, where what's gonna happen is that the left guard and left tackle will both be blocking those two Cincinnati players who are right in front of them. And then what they're actually going to do is pull a right guard all the way around to the top half of the screen as he will be the guy lead blocking for Snell and essentially just he's going to be blocking a linebacker. So that's the way this play is supposed to work. Again, this is a second down and 23 situation. So ideally, you're not really trying to gain a first down here necessarily. Well, that would be nice. You're mainly just trying to create an achievable third down situation. You want to get like 10 to 13 yards or so, make it a third down in 13 to 10. So that way you just... Just give yourself a shot on the next play. And after the ball is snapped, the one matchup you're going to take a look at is that Cincinnati Bengal right there, as he absolutely has a chance right now to get off this block and make a tackle on Snell. But watch how Snell kind of fakes as though he's going in, but then goes to the outside, so he gets around that Cincinnati player and is able to get plenty of yards. Really just a good run by Snell. Nothing crazy, and honestly, he doesn't have a lot of highlight reel type plays. I do have to admit that, but... He's been solid for the Pittsburgh Steelers and has definitely been a pretty good backup running back, no doubt about it. Obviously, they would love to have Connor in there, but if you can't have Connor, Snell has definitely done a pretty good job in his place. He does his part. He won't often do too much more than his part, but he will give, him, give you an extra couple of yards and he will always get the yards that are there, which is really what you want from a backup running back. Like, this one's another one I like, where the way this is going to work is that they're going to have their two players on the edge just block the two Bengals in front of them once again, and it'll be a receiver who's going to run out, and his job is to just block who's ever in the area. He doesn't have an assigned man, it's just block whoever you see that should be blocked. And so after the ball is snapped, one thing you will notice is a very good block from Zach Banner. He is absolutely doing a great job of just pushing somebody out of the way, so... Give him some credit, he's doing a very good job on that play, which is key because that's going to basically just create a huge hole for Snell to run through, and Snell will easily be able to get to that second level, no problem. But once you get to that second level, there will be a problem. What's going to happen really is, look at that Cincinnati Bengal, nobody is blocking him. And you might be saying, wait a second, isn't there supposed to be a Pittsburgh Steeler who's blocking whoever's closest in the area? And yes, there is, but as you see, he's looking to block somebody else, so... This now means that a Cincinnati player will be able to run over and make a tackle on Snell at a certain point. This play is not going to go for too many more yards, although it will go for some yards. However, watch how Snell just maximizes the yards he can get. Once he gets through the hole, he just puts his head down, runs forward, and is able to get a first down on a play that honestly looked like it probably wasn't going to go for a first down. That was looking like it was only going to be a three or four yard gain, but because he didn't try to do too much essentially, he just put his head down and ran. That's how he was able to get the first down. It's what you have to do as a halfback. More often than not, you're better off just taking the yards that are there than trying to make a move and try to get a touchdown out of it because, especially in the NFL, guys are too good for that. They can make open field tackles easily, so sometimes it is better to just put your head down and try to get the first down. That's what Snell did there, and it really paid off for him. He does that a lot. This plays another example. There's going to be just three one-on-one -on -one matchups right off the bat, and right when the ball is snapped, this is actually a very interesting situation. So it's another well-blocked play by Pittsburgh. They did a very good job of blocking against Cincinnati all day, I felt like. That's just my opinion in terms of the running game. But also, if you look right now, there is a Bengal who's running over to try to make a play because there's always going to be somebody who's unblocked and it makes things a lot easier when you're not really expecting a passing play too often or if you do think there could be a passing play, you're not really too afraid. So he's going to run in and try to make a quick tackle on Snell. So Snell, again, puts his head down and just runs to try to pick up as many yards as possible. Also, I like how Dunlap right there, 96, uh, Carlos Dunlap, he's signaling as though it should be a fourth down, even though that was on second down. So obviously it's not going to be fourth down now. I mean, you can't blame him, you know. It's a long season. You're playing for the Bengals. You can't win a game. Every now and then you're just going to... Going to forget what down it is. Okay, no big deal, but definitely pretty funny. 
I also like this play, where it's going to be a third down and one, and for the Steelers, actually the key thing you're going to take a look at is the fact that there are going to be two Steelers in the bottom half of the screen, just blocking the two Bengals in the area, but what's also key here is just the situation. It's a third down and one, three minutes and 49 seconds left, the Steelers are up three. So the more clock you can kill, the better. You want to get this first down here. It also is a situation where if you don't get it, you probably have to kick a long field goal. But then if you miss it, now Cincinnati doesn't have to go very far to get a field goal of their own. If you do get the first down, it probably means you'll make a shorter field goal, which you probably could make. So there's definitely a lot at stake here. And also, that Bengal you're going to want to take a look at because he will be the closest unblocked man. As what's going to happen is when you look at Snell right when this ball was snapped, he doesn't like what he sees up front, so he's going to try to cut through the bottom half of the screen, which is obviously why I pointed that out. So this now means that this is just pretty simple, one-on-one. -on -one. Snell has to make a guy miss if he's going to get the first down or run him over, his decision. And the defensive player, if he can make a tackle in open space, this could be a huge play. Either they'll have to kick a long field goal, and now your offense will have plenty of time to try to get a touchdown, or they won't be able to make the field goal, they'll miss it, and then your offense will have plenty of time to just kick a field goal so either way it would be huge if you can make this open field tackle but I think he was just fooled by Benny Snell's acceleration because watch how he just completely gets by him Snell was able to run for plenty of yards get inside the 15 right there and that's just really just a huge play it really makes things just that much tougher on your opposing offense it makes things that much easier for your defense and that's what your job is and one last play this is the game's kind of over anyways but you know, this is the one that would actually end up icing it, where what's going to happen is that two Steelers on the top half of the screen are actually going to pull over to the bottom half of the screen to block those two Cincinnati players right there. And then Snell will simply just follow them, and that's the way this play is going to work. Pretty simple. However, one thing you will notice right when this ball is snapped is that there definitely are Cincinnati players who can try to get off their block and make a tackle right here. Snell is going to have to move quickly to get past them. If he runs too slow, this could allow a Bengal to reach their arm out, grab Snell, create a third down situation, which, I mean, listen, okay, a third down situation, then you can still run 40 seconds off the clock, and then you'll probably run another running play, even if they get a stop, then you run another 40 seconds off the clock. Realistically, best case scenario for Cincinnati, they're looking at having like 25 seconds left, and they would also need a missed field goal to not allow it to be a two-score game, so they already need a lot, but don't even give them the chance to, to make a miracle if you are the Steelers. Try to just win it right here. And that's what Snell is going to do. He does run by both of those Cincinnati players. He's able to get inside the 10-yard line and manages to stay in bounds, which is pretty impressive. So, again, the game was pretty much over at that point. But regardless, the Bengals were still trying on that play. He was just better. It's not like Benny Snell is an elite halfback by any means. But you know what? Most players aren't going to be elite. And at least if he can be a solid contributor, then he is absolutely worth a fourth-round pick. I mean, how many fourth-round picks even become... NFL players three years later only so many so if you can get somebody that late who isn't just a role player but is actually a solid contributor like Snell has been well that's just huge news and the reality is the Steelers are just one of the best drafting teams there is it seems like whoever they draft ends up being great you always know that you're going to be a good football player if you get drafted by the Steelers. It just seems that way. So for Snell, he has been put in a situation where he can succeed, and he has succeeded for the Steelers. Now, the Steelers are still an interesting team. They're definitely, they have a great defense. They have a solid running game, and their receiving core, when healthy, is all right. Definitely, they're missing Big Ben this season. There's no doubt about it, but I do like Duck. We'll see what he can do in the future. But as it stands right now, the Steelers are actually in a playoff spot, remarkably. They're currently in the sixth seed. Granted, they're in a four-way tie. There's four, six, and five teams right now. It's the Steelers, the Raiders, the Colts, and the Titans who are all trying to get that sixth seed in the AFC. And of course, maybe their biggest threat is a team that they play next week just because it's the Cleveland Browns. And if the Browns are able to win that game, then they would tie the Steelers but also have the tiebreaker over the Steelers. So... That's going to be a huge game next week with playoff implications. I mean, as crazy as this season has been for both the Browns and the Steelers, it's kind of crazy to think that in week 13, we're going to have a game with a playoff implication against them. That's that's pretty remarkable. Now, of course, in fairness, part of that is just there's kind of a, a, a weak spot in that sixth seed for the AFC. But at the same time, they're two teams that are pretty good. The Steelers, I definitely think, are a good team who could really use their Hall of Fame quarterback to return but we'll just have to sort of wait and see what happens but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always 
Thanks for watching.